to all living things, all creatures of the land, air and sea, as you visit, are born and pass through. Kovioch, be it remembered that the said has been passed by generations before us, and be it known that to honour these lands you will duly be initiated of the ancient order whenever you enter these realms. Nida dim yn berchen y mynyddoedd, the tirwedd, the treithoedd, traed, honour, protect, troi parch. Daeth yn teulu i'r ffarm yn 1784, dyna fo, dwi'n credu bod mi'n byddai saethfed cenedlaeth yn ffarm o'r lle. So mae gwreiddau dwfw'n darni yn yr ardal. My grandfather, my paternal grandfather, was a coal merchant on the docks in Milford Haven. From the time I was three till I was six, we lived in Paris, and my father worked on the fish market in Paris, the sort of equivalent of Billingsgate. And we then came back to Milford. My mum's side, the Lewises and the Thomases and the, all of those, they were already here. My mother was born in uh, Creswell Street, and up in the cemetery, my great, great, great grandparents are. They're all up there. On my father's side, my, my grandfather came here in 1880, London ice cream cafe, really. And his first place he lived was the kebab shop in Lower Frog Street. I'm a musician, amongst other things, and I've lived in Pembrokeshire since 1986. My family background is uh, Vietnamese. Uh, they came to Pembrokeshire about 35 years ago now. They were working around, around the place, you know, waitering and things, and uh, then my dad opened the Chinese and Saunders Foot. And we're so blessed that we've been accepted. And, oh, I'm absolutely privileged to be living in Pembrokeshire. Caraith. Arrive. I'r lle cysegredig hwn. On sacred ground. Greiddiau Celtaidd yn y tîr. Ancient roots. Treasures found. Adlewyrchu o'r arfordir. Deep, deep of the earth. Llygaid hynafol trwy dreigl amser. Cerig las, cilch cerig, pentre ifan. Chwareli. Bluestone. Placed, replaced. Wrth i'r hael godi. Iaith y tirwedd. Footprints embedded in slate steps, pilgrims' trails. Offrum or Gorfenol. Well, when I started in 1976 as a student radiographer, my base hospital, as they called it in those days, was the main hospital in Pembrokeshire, and that was the County War Memorial Hospital, and that was up on St Thomas's Green in Haverford West. I think it's a block of flats now, I'm not absolutely sure. But we also covered other hospitals, sort of more cottagey hospitals then. One was Withybush, which was old Nissen huts from the war, and that was our medical wards. So we covered up there as well. I think it was two or three different huts altogether, and we had a, an x-ray department then in, in one of them. Um, but that seemed to be, I don't know why, but it seemed to be more modern, because the county hospital itself was really, really years old, long overdue replacing, you know and uh, the waiting rooms, there wasn't a waiting room. So if you were moving a bed or a, or a chair of patient through the corridors, um, there would literally be patients lined up either side. It was like going through a barricade. It was amazing. But you look back and it wasn't, it, it was just the thing at the time. And you can imagine with people lined up either side, it wasn't me, I will say it wasn't me, but a colleague took the mobile machine, the slope just took it because it had no brakes just took it and she ran over somebody's foot and broke it. But then it was just, oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and she carried on with what she was doing. I'll have a real affinity. 
definitely see with horses, I'd have to be a wild horse, I think. You know, running around Pembrokeshire causing uh, chaos. I just, I just, anything to do with horses, I loved, even now. And that's another thing I remember from my childhood. When I was a kid, there were horses everywhere. There were fields and there were horses everywhere. At, at least in each street, it seemed like in Penrith and Buffalo and all, because we got all the fields that go down to the river. Everybody had horses. To be out in the countryside and suddenly come up upon a horse in a field is just such a rare occurrence now. You think, oh my God, it's a horse. Whereas, like when I was a girl, I remember that was, that was I'd take a full day just going around with, seeing all the horses because there was just loads of them. Sacrifices felt, ancient bleeding you, seethe, coch, gwaed and deferi. Fermwyr lleol, merched beca, dwylo cryf, torri'r toilborth, torri'r treth. Y busy mwyaf prefoclid yw fel bod cynelliad at ein cyrdydd sy'n mor bell o'r ffordd yn un byw'r rhwng ffyrrhyn yn dyfa, nhw sy'n gwneud y rheolau a nhw sy'n gweud yn ei shrydu ffarmo. Am sy'n sy'n gest yn nhw un yn dyfa, hwnna yw peth mwyaf brofoclid. A so, beth maen nhw'n, beth maen nhw'n dial beth ydy'n cefn yn gwlad? A ffarmo mae'n gael ei rhyfnadu hwnna yw'n dyfa, so ti fel yn, ti ma'n maen ffordd o fyw yn ydych na fel ffordd o ennill biwoliaeth. Mae'n rhoi o'r ffermwyr o'n ffyrrhyn sy'n cadw falle beth ydy'n dyfair, yn gorfod cadw fel swydd arall yn dyfa. A ti ma'n sefyd yn rili'n ei sens, achos ar bapur, ti ma'n maen deiar yn ei gyd ati yn dyfa. A ti'n edrych yn ariannog o gwnadw hwn, ach ti ma'n sefyd yn yn job yn diawl i ennill cyflog ma'n sefyd yn dyfa. Ond ti'n neud e, achos ti'n diolch ddyfagu mewn yn dyfa, na beth si yn y gwad yn dyfa. Ein hatgofion ni, childhood in the wild, ar ffarm yn gweithio'r tîr, Cefn Ceffyl, Pembroke Castle Moat. Llwybr yr arfordyr, smell of the morning, silence with the stars at night. Rhyddid. I went to Pembroke College, but it was down in Eiland, so I went um, on the bus to have dressed, and then the train down to Eiland. <laughs> so it was quite a way to go then. Yeah. <laughs> And then it was a steam train from Nayland all the way to Swansea. Do you know, I can still smell that smell <laughs> what of, of, the, of the steam train, yes. And then you'd climb up into the smokehouse and that smell that came up from the wood, uh, the, the fire, which was a particular blend of types of wood to make the, the, to smoke the fish. And Sid Wanacott was the, was the smokehouse keeper. But if I went to the cinema on a Saturday to the Astoria, uh, no matter how long I stayed in the bath or tried, I'd have, I'd have fish scales stuck to me all over the place. Uh, and my hands would be dyed yellow from dipping into the brine. And you couldn't get that out. And I used to stink, so nobody would sit near me in the cinema. Wise man's bridge roamed Caldy Island. A ffordd eiraidd, mae'n clwchog i mynachlog ddi. When I was like 14, 15 and really struggling with my mental health, I was like super struggling. And I had no outlet whatsoever. I surfed, but, and I surfed every, like at least twice a week, but it just wasn't, well, I wasn't consistent at this point, I didn't think. My mum and me made a rule that like every single time my brother was at his dad's, we'd go to the beach and no matter what the weather was, I had to go in the water and I had to go underwater. Yeah, put my head underwater, even if it just meant, I remember one time, it was really cold. It wasn't even, I think it was quite flat. It must have been quite flat, but we went down to Broadhaven and I was like, I really don't want to get in the water. And mum was like, you have no choice. This is the promise you have made. And it's, you know, the thing that's keeping you going each week, you're getting in the water. So I literally just ran down, um, you know, on the right hand side, like, jumped down all the steps and uh, just like got in the shallows, put my face under the water and then got back up and ran back up to the car. But yeah, for like those two years where I was really struggling, every single week mum would make sure that I'd either go surfing or I'd go for a swim. I'd go for a swim. 
pob pedwch yn edrych nôl at, at y glad a dych chi'n cael you know, these amazing golygoedd o'r sunset a dych chi'n dal y ton a dych chi'n teimlo dych fel dych chi'n hedfan dych chi'n gallu gweld um, uh, yr anifeiliad y môr dych chi'n gweld y sea lion Rockes ym leith natur, syrffio, dal y tôn, hedfan, edrych yn nôl at y wlad. Cofiwch i addo rhodd, y Pembrokeshire Promis. The thing that came to my head then was actually how my colleagues responded when I came out as trans. Because they responded in a way that I did not expect them to. I was expecting them to maybe be like, right, we'll help you to figure it out, we'll send you to council, blah, blah, blah. Now, they literally sent someone straight down to my classroom to do like a presentation with my class so that they could all ask their questions. They could all figure it out. Um, and if they did have any questions that like the PowerPoint didn't explain to them, they were directed to me. Um, shaking a little bit, actually, because <laughs> um, that isn't something that I would have expected i was expecting to be like shunned like i had in most other areas when i tried to like be myself it's one of the reasons i went to college to be fair it allowed me to not be as scared as i was about coming out and being myself and college was probably one of the safest places i felt as nick even like afterwards genedlaethau o ffermwyr yn pigo tato oen yn ei dymor greiddiau'n blygiro Go baith yn y tîr. Chymol, dros ceie, nan tri cael yn y ffarn, hei bod mewn trwrgoedwy gi mi gan wers ffarn dros nysa i mofyn bod nhw wedi dod â sachyd o ffrwr i ni. A llysgo honno gydre trwr eira a, a wedyn we bobl yn byw lawr yr hewlth o ni ar y groesfordd yn, yn, yn lawr dyn ni yn bwys yn, yn y bynesef yna o ni mynd â peth blawd i nhw er mwyn i nhw gael gweithio bara achos we hwnna yn fwyd i nhw a we hwnna a we plant o ni Wen i'n ddod o hyd yn? Wel, wen i'n ddod o hyd yn yn awted wen i'n yn dwi'n ddod chi'n alaf i neud wen i'n byddi wyth nawr mwy ddweud yn llusgo sachyr ddweud dwi a we an yn ysgol i'w chradd just dwi'n ddod yn ysgol i'w chradd Lleisiau ar y gwynt battling the raging sea Tynnu rhwydi, trolers pulling, flares shooting stars in the night sky. I gysgodfan yr harbwr. Feet run to the docks, lifeboats protection. Some say the grounds were overfished, others blame the price of oil. Whatever is the reason, few are left the seas to toil. Ship's husbands, decky learners, boatswain's mate and all the rest. Most folk won't know these names if you put them to the test. The ships had noble names, like Alexander Scott, Milford Knight and Milford Viscount, which was tragically lost. Most men wouldn't talk about the hell that they went through. They cast their nets in stormy seas. They had a job to do. So when they came ashore, they did used to party a bit. <laughs> And uh, the ship's husband used to go around the pubs, dragging them out and <laughs> getting them <laughs> ready if, if, if you were one short sort of thing. And if you couldn't miss the dock gates because you'd be stuck there and then you'd lose the rest of them. Ovid Callon, ye yanked it a devodol. Farwed and a gayav, the nestry doel, tai half guag. Fermydd bach yn diflannu, cymunedau yn oltro, tiwristiaid yn darganfod yr harddwch, yr hanes, guests discovering. Symud ymlaen i dyfodol newydd to a new future. So I'll share too, you know, what I've mentioned, my son died and we all knew it was going to be a... <laughs> a bloody big funeral, you know, because he was a bloody big lad and had a lot of friends and, and we hadn't got anywhere to, <laughs> we hadn't really got anywhere that was big enough because we knew that hundreds of people would turn up. And he used to love um, car boot sales, he was a nutcase, he drove me nuts, looking, looking, looking and 
And we used to go to this one in Carew, Carew Market, a big one on a Sunday. It became a regular feature. And, and yeah, he absolutely loved it, uh, particularly when he found a skip behind it where people who couldn't sell stuff, they chuck it in this skip. <laughs> so at the end of going round it, he'd just disappear every time. And, and sure enough, he'd come back, I've still got some of these weird things he'd, he'd pull out of the skip because they were free of charge, you know, like things free. So having looked everywhere for a, a hall or, I don't know, somewhere with enough car parking, uh, and somewhere that could be big enough to hold what we intended doing, um, Cairo Market came up and they were brilliant. Although they didn't really understand we were going to hold a funeral with a body in it. <laughs> and you know, I can remember the morning that we arrived to set up in, uh, and we did have six, seven hundred people coming. And I looked inside this huge hangar and I thought, Jesus, how on earth is this going to create an intimate space? And I think this is Pembrokeshire for you because they have people who care and within, I don't know, within an hour or two, you know, people with Land Rovers, well not just Land Rovers, but people with cars, we're turning over trees, um, one of our local friends with woods came with huge amounts of pine branches. There's a lot of, there's a lot of art, Pe people know what to do at a time like this and quite quickly this um, concrete bunker almost, you know, became this absolutely extraordinarily beautiful, intimate space with all of his personal belongings and 600 chairs in a circle. And I still remember, you know, the moment we brought his beautifully painted, hand-painted coffin in and put it in the middle of this place. And that, that's an extraordinary memory. As sad as it is, um, it's got to be a memory that I, I will, in an odd way, always relish. You know, if somebody's going to die in those circumstances, then to have moments like that that connect the person who's gone, my son, Sulian, with his community like that is extraordinary. Mm -hmm.